Welcome everybody to another episode of In The Zone. I, of course, am your host, Chris Broussard. We got another great show with you. I must say another tremendous, insightful, eye-opening, entertaining interview with another ex-NBA player. This time, it is Al Harrington. I go back with Al till he was 18 years old when he first got in the league, did a big story on him for the New York Times. It was interesting watching his career, and now he's doing some really interesting things as well. Very successful. So we got that. Of course, we got Knocked Down Jay with my man Jason McIntyre. We're going to tackle some really good topics as we head into the NBA Finals. But first, as always, we're going to hit you with the top five postseason player power rankings. And this is the last one. We won't do one through the finals because you're only looking at two teams. This is the final installment, and it is going to be for the whole playoffs. It's not just who had a great week last week or the last two weeks. This is the entire postseason. Who, in my estimation, were the best five players? At number five, James Harden. I know! I know he's been catching flack. My, my staff here on In The Zone been ripping him. But James Harden. 29 points a game. I think he shot 41% from the floor. Gave you seven assists a game to lead the team. Also led the Rockets in steals with 2.2 a game. Whoever thought James Harden would do that? Remember him picking KD's pocket at midcourt. And here's the thing. James Harden got the Houston Rockets. I know he struggled from three. He wasn't phenomenal as he was in the regular season, but he still was great. He got the Houston Rockets within a whisker, a whisker of beating the Golden State Warriors, one of the greatest teams we've ever seen in these playoffs without his second best player for game six and seven, Chris Paul. At number four, Kevin Durant. You say that's low, you might say it's high. Look, I, I was critical of Durant because at times, you know, they got too much ISO heavy in Golden State, got away from their free flowing offense. Everything was running from him, through him. But you know what? I'm not going to blame that all on Kevin Durant. Steve Kerr has to take some responsibility because you are the coach. Pull rank if they're not playing right and say start moving the ball. I'm going to blame a little bit of it on Steph and Clay because I saw too many times at half court they just gave the ball to Durant, ran over to the side, and wanted to see him go to work. So they deferred to him a little too much. So it wasn't just Durant. At number three, I got to give some love to the young boy, Jason Tatum. Led the Boston Celtics without their two best players, Gordon Hayward, Kyrie Irving, past the two man children in Philadelphia, past Milwaukee and big time Giannis Adetokounmpo. He, Tatum became the first youngest player ever ever to lead his team in scoring in the playoffs and get to the conference finals. Younger than Michael Jordan, younger than Lou Alcindor, now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This man, younger than LeBron James. Jason Tatum, a star is born. At number two, Anthony Davis, the Unibra. I know he went out relatively early, five games in the second round, but when he played, he did major damage. Led the New Orleans Pelicans to their first playoff series victory in a decade. Second all in of among all playoff scores in scoring at 30 points a game behind only LeBron James. Led all the rebounders in the playoffs, 13 and a half a game. Led all the shot blockers in the playoffs, over two a game. Shot over 50% from the field. I mean, what more could the dude do? Number one, you know who it is. The suspense is gone. LeBron James. I didn't believe it earlier in the in the season, but at least offensively, and even in the playoffs, he picked it up defensively. This he's playing the best offensive basketball I've ever seen him play. I've ever seen him play. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. His jumper now is butter. That's the thing. We know he can get to the rim and score. We know he can get hot from three. But his mid-range jumper, the turnaround, the fadeaway, all that is butter. And with that, he's unstoppable. We always talk GOAT. 
If you want to tell me no one has played at a higher level than LeBron James is playing right now, I, I have trouble arguing that. So LeBron James doing it here, doing it there, doing it everywhere. Number one, the best player in the NBA in these playoffs, LeBron James. All right, I want to welcome in my man Al Harrington to In The Zone. It's great to have you here. But people don't know, we go way back. Way back. Dog. I remember you were, what, 18, I guess? Yep, yep. Right. During the lockout, I went to Indiana, Indianapolis, did a story on you for the New York Times. Yep, yep. It's just, and I used to always think this, it was amazing to just see your career. You know, I kind of, because knowing you at 18, and then watching you throughout the career become like an elder statesman in the league and all that, you know? It was a we trip. You all get man. old, right? Yeah. <laughs> you were what, 34, 33? 34 my last year. So that's young, but yeah. when you go in earlier, right. it's like. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had played 16. It was my knee. I think I could have okay. played a little bit more, but um, what happened was, it's funny, like you go through a little phase where like, the, the NBA don't want you no more, kind of. So it's, it, it, it really attacks your ego. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Okay. But for me, the reason why I didn't keep fighting because I easily could have got two more years out of this knee for okay. sure. But I think it was because of the business stuff that I had off the court. You know what I'm saying? It was just as uh, entertaining to me as playing basketball okay. at that point. So it was an easy transition for me. Just say, you know what? It's cool. I had my I had my time. Let me go work on something else. It's good you prepared yourself. I That's did, you know, and thing. it was on accident, kind of. I always tell people, like, you know, the next industry I chose really chose me, you know okay. what I'm saying? Because when I grew up, obviously, I was totally against it, you yep, know what I'm saying? Yep, I was scared yep. of it and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's been a smooth transition for me. Good, and uh, good. you're right. I mean, I couldn't imagine if I didn't have nothing going on or where I would be right now, you mm -hmm, know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's one thing I do want to, like, start to talk to players about is, like, really, you know, people always say prepare for it, but you really should because it's culture shock, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Going not, from not being either. the man and people, you know, wanting you and then to, like, <laughs> no Just one a regular you no person. I'm like regular now, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's been good though. I've been, I've having a lot of fun. Uh, I live out here in LA, so okay. I feel like I live in paradise. So I mean, yeah. what can I it's complain about complain at this about point? That. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll get to all that to your business and stuff. But first, look, it, obviously, NBA Finals about to start. Golden State, Cleveland, Part Four. Let's get your opinions on that first. You give LeBron and the Cavs any chance? I give him a chance just because LeBron is like playing like with a six man this year. He's balling, right? You know what I mean? Like yep. it just seemed like if it's any year for him to pull up something even more magical than what he's already done is this year. So I wouldn't write him off. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, if he could just get his support and cast to yep. each, you know, three or four guys to get just ten. <laughs> they got That's a shot. That's all he needs, right? Just get 10 sometime. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes he struggled with getting guys just to give him that. So if he can just get that consistently the entire series, he has a shot. What do you think about it? looks like LeBron and KD will be matched up against each other. Right. There was a feeling last year after KD hit that shot in LeBron's face that the torch had been passed. Right. What's your thoughts on that? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Bron still won it, man. I mean, you look at the way he played this year. I tell people all the time, like, if he played the way he played this year, he would have been the GOAT for sure. It wouldn't have mm. been no discussion mm. about it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, he really put his offense on display. He put, like, everything on display this year. And before, he's always selfless and everything. Yep. This year, he was just like, he like, year 15, I'm going to show y'all, like, what I really could have done. So, okay. you, you know, at the end of the day, I think that if Iguodala don't play, that could hurt them. You know what I'm saying? Because if KD has to guard him the entire series and you see the way, like, Bron is playing man amongst boys right mm -hmm. now. You know, like, mm -hmm. his post game is like Shaq. Yeah. Almost out there, right. you know what I mean? So <laughs> if he keep that going, I, I don't know what they're going to do with him. What is it like for you to see him in his 15th year? His athleticism looks just about as good as ever. I mean, when you're watching that, are you like, man, this is crazy? It don't make sense. <laughs> I mean, I played. <laughs> yeah, And yeah. I played with great players, you know, and I played with guys that prepared themselves. I prepared myself. And to be playing at that level at year 15 is really amazing. You know, I, I take my hat off to him. Whatever he's doing is like, you know, obviously it's his secret sauce and obviously mm -hmm. he hasn't shown anybody else because nobody's been able to do it, <laughs> which is smart. I guess his son will probably be the next one that can do it. But uh, it's really amazing. I don't get it. I'm just like, he's out there playing at a level like he's 23 years yeah. old. Like, so when people ask me sometimes, they're like, how, how, how much long do you think LeBron can play? I'm like, easy five to seven years. 
Whew. I mean, just think about it. I mean, the way he played this year. Yeah, nah, he looks. And if he ever decides to go somewhere where he wanted to be the second guy and not be the first guy, uh-huh. that just preserves him a little bit more. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, speaking of that, because obviously he's going to be a free agent this summer, where would you recommend, if he asked you, what would you say he should do? Well, my heart would say go to the Knicks because I'm a Knicks fan. Duh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know but your I know heart that's ain't going to happen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but if I was him, I would stay. I mean, where are you going? You, you don't go to the West. Like, if you come no, to the I West, agree. you go to the Lakers, even if you go to San Antonio, now you got to play Houston to Golden State in the second round every year. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You may as well stay in the East. You're dominating over here. And I would say, you know, most people say Philly. I like Philly. Yeah. But why you like Philly? Because if he go to Philly, then he kills Ben Simmons. Ben we'll Simmons see. does nothing yeah. at that point because LeBron, one, has to have the ball in his hand, and Ben can't hit a shot from me to you no. right now. <laughs> and, I mean, hopefully he'll develop it right now. That's the reality of yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So if he goes there, I think Ben takes five steps backwards. Yeah, Philly gets better. But I think Ben, ben could be a little Bronish. Yeah. I think he has it yeah. in him. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my whole thing is like, I wouldn't take, if I'm Philly, I'm not taking Braun just because I would rather trust the process. That's interesting. Because I, I felt the same way. I talked to some people close to LeBron. They were like, because I, I told them, I said, I, you don't want LeBron taking the ball out of Ben Simmons' right. hands. And they said LeBron wants to play off the ball. Now, it's, it's easy to say that, right? Yeah. But... You've been, he been playing that way, not just NBA, his whole life. That's what so he that's is, look, He's a point guard. He's not an off-the-ball guy. <laughs> that's why, like, even people say he'll go to Houston. I'm like, he, di- he definitely yeah, can't go to Houston. Chris. Like, that <laughs> never will happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think he just needs to stay right there. He need to go beg somebody to come play with him. You know what I'm saying? A la PG or some, if he somebody could get PG, like that. That'd be, yeah, I think he'll be, be nice. straight. You know what I'm saying? But I, I wouldn't leave Cleveland, so that would be my advice. Just stay there and figure out another piece to come help you. Okay, okay, okay. You were with the Warriors when y'all beat Dallas Correct. in the first round. What was that like? Like, go, y'all had played well against them in the regular season. Right. I, was it six and zero? Or? Yeah, we I don't beat know them, if you them every time. Six times, no, we beat yeah. them four times. You swept them. Yeah, yeah. So going into that series, did y'all just feel like, man, we people no, don't know we got their number? We knew we had them. Like it was never a doubt in our mind that we could we could beat them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think yeah. it showed. You know what I mean? And, the fact that Don Nelson had just came from there, like he literally had the blueprint of how so to beat really, them. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he knew he knew everything Dirk would do. You know what I mean? And as much as I don't like Don Nelson, he was <laughs> an unbelievable basketball mind. You know what I mean? Yep. He knew the game. He saw the game in a way that I don't think I could ever see the game. And I think a lot of coaches don't see the game that way. You know what I mean? So, you know, he gave us a game plan. And I tell people, <laughs> my uh, thing back then was like, we were like computers. Like he entered, he entered some information into our brains <laughs> and we just did it and it was just like it worked every single time wow now what was your issue with don he just you know what and it's funny because now i got older right i've been sitting thinking like you know what was it that he was just trying to push me it was just like he he never he never made me feel comfortable ever you know what i'm saying it was never like a good moment between it was always something negative but at the end of the day when i sit and think about it now i'm like you know i did have some really good years there Mm -hmm. under him too Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so maybe that was his way of motivating me so I was just in Maui or whatever, and right when I was out there, there was like an article that came out that said that like he had a cannabis strain or something like that. And, oh, really? uh, <laughs> while I was there, and I was thinking like, you know what? I hit, I hit Baron. I was like, B, um, send me Don number. I want to hit him up or whatever. But I, ain't, I didn't yeah. hit him. I didn't hit him no. But I was thinking I should just hit him up and just you know figure out if me and him could sit down and you know Clear make amends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you came out of course right out of high school, 1998 right. draft. It, but it was your seventh year before you came a full-time starter. Right. Do, looking back, would you have done the same thing, or do you ever wish you had gone to college or anything? Uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I've had those times where I thought about, like, maybe I should have went to college just to see my AAU coach, the guy that actually taught me the game. But see, what people don't know is that, like, I didn't start playing basketball until I was a freshman in high school. Really? You know what I mean? So, so what, I were you at Ro- Roselle? I was New at Jersey? Roselle my freshman okay. year, and they made me play basketball. So man. you at didn't this, play – so when you say – you mean organized, or were you out on the streets playing on the playground? I playing at all because even when I tried to play in the playground, nobody would pick me. Wow. So I would go to the park. I was, I was uncoordinated. I was okay. chubby. You know, <laughs> so I had a growth spurt. So I was 5'10", fat boy uh, in Orange, New Jersey. Were you athletic? I wasn't and, athletic wow. or nothing. Uh, so I moved to Roselle, but that summer I grew from 5'10 to 6'4". Wow. So when I got there, everybody see this tall, lanky kid walking yeah. around. They're like, oh, you play basketball. And I'm like, yeah, I play a little basketball. I didn't play basketball at all. <laughs> and even on my freshman team, I didn't start. 
I didn't play on a the lot. freshman on my team. Fre- I played freshman wow. basketball in Roselle, and I got put on the team because the JV uh, defensive coach was the head basketball coach. So he called me Big Daddy. And he's like, Big Daddy, you playing basketball. I'm like, nah, coach, I just want to focus and get ready. I want to try to play varsity my sophomore year. Okay. Football, because football oh, was my football first was love. I played football. So how good were you in football? I was good. I was just, but I was always on the offensive line. I was fat, so okay. I wasn't all that okay. athletic or whatever. So I was always on the offensive line, and I was a defensive end. So okay. those were my two okay. positions. And I was just telling him, like, I just want to focus on football. He's like, no, you playing basketball. So he made me play or whatever, and I started playing. And next thing you know, I just started picking it up. You know, my freshman year, like I said, I was terrible. But my AAU coach, he was there to recruit another player on my team. And instead of him getting that play, he got me. Wow. <laughs> so he started working with me, working with me. And then I decided to transfer schools, which is a leap of faith, to go Saint play Pats, to St. Right? Pat's to an all-basketball school yeah. where, like, literally my freshman year, I didn't even play, to starting on a national, you know, we was top 10 in the country. As a sophomore? As a sophomore, said? I'm starting on this team. I was terrible then, too. Like, I averaged probably six points a game. How'd you start, though? I, that, I mean, I, you could have Because I was 6'6". Six, six. I was just, I was big, you know what did, I'm saying? Did y'all have any other D1 players Shaheen Holloway oh he you was over there yeah that, I heard he went was, to see Nall, yeah right? that was the best player yeah. on our team and okay. then we just had a bunch of other six five six eight guys or whatever but I guess you know my coach did see something Kevin Boyle who's yeah, down at yeah. uh, Mount Verde I guess he saw something in me he let me start sophomore year like I said I averaged six points maybe and then he snuck me into the Adidas camp that okay. summer but that summer leading up into Adidas camp, I was with my AAU coach every day, like every single day working out. And I went to the camp and ended up being one of the top 10 players at the camp. And then everything just took off for me from wow. there. That's, that's, I didn't know the whole background that yeah, you had yeah. to play. So your junior year, did you do damage at My junior Pat? year, I averaged like 23 okay. or whatever. And uh, and it was funny too, because, you know, I can talk about it now, but like Boyle, when he snuck me into the uh, Adidas camp, he was there trying to steal another player. Oh, really? Like some <laughs> kid around the country that yeah, was kind of yeah. just really good, lost kind of, you know? So <laughs> he was like, we got it. And this is what he's telling me. He's like, like we plot. He's like, yeah, we got to, some guys we may have to talk to and be like, you know, we need him to come to St. <laughs> Pat's. And, then, and I ended up being his best player. You wow. know what I'm saying? Wow, wow. So what what was the toughest thing about coming out of high school and going straight to the NBA? For me, nothing was tough because I think that when you're that young, you're just young and naive and you go with the flow. Okay. Like you don't even realize the magnitude of the decision that you just made. You know what I mean? Yep, like. Yep. When I decided to go pro, it was just because I was a top player in the country. That's what you're yeah, supposed I was to say, do. What is, okay, so that was That it. was the only Did reason why. Did you take recruiting trips, go to college? I took recruiting so? trips. I went to Georgia Tech. I went to Ohio State. I went to St. John's, Seton Hall, and I uh, skipped my NC State visit. I okay. didn't take that one or whatever. But I took visits or whatever. The whole time I knew I was going pro. Wow. Yeah, wow. I never had no intentions on going to college. And you lived, did you, because I know when I did the story on you, it was during the lockout. Right. And you were Antonio. living with Antonio Davis. Yeah. Um, did you did you live with him throughout the season? or? I lived with him that whole season, because remember, the, the lockout like ended in the middle of the That's night, true. if you yeah. remember. And it yeah. was like, training camp was two days later. Everybody right. had to get going. So, you know, I was I was talking to Tone. I was just like, you know, should I find a spot? And he's just like, man, you done been here all this time. You may as well, we got two months. Just yeah, stay yeah, here. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So he looked out for me, and then I brought my family out the next year. Okay. Or whatever, okay. Just so I had that support, because Antonio had got traded. Do you think, what do you think the rules should be? Because it looks like they may go back right. to the high school players being able to go pro. They should definitely go back. Like okay. I said, I mean, when you really think about it, like what, who wasn't successful that came out of high school? You know what That's I mean? And then Very the few. other thing that they love people they love, people love to say is like uh, college helps you become an adult and manage money and all that. So far, I haven't seen any of the high school players broke Yeah. either. You look LeBron, Kobe, they very smart. You, obviously. I'm just saying, you guys, haven't, seen none, of, McGrady, you haven't yeah. seen none of that yet. You know what I mean? Yep. So, I mean, yep. all the guys that went broke, these guys went to college four years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, I think it should change. I mean, the one-year rule really makes no sense at the end of the day. I mean, all the college system doing is pimping those kids anyway. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And mm-hmm. making them live under these crazy restrictions that make no sense at all. So, I mean, if a guy's good enough to go, let him go, man. Man, and if he's not, then that's on him. That's the decision that he made. Yeah, I think they should somehow, like, if the kid doesn't get drafted in the first round, right. now if you can go to the G League, then right. you, you got a safety net. Yep. You know, years ago you couldn't go to the D League, right. and so that was the problem. Right. But now if you can go to the G League. Right, now that's a good, that's a, uh, good point because now they've actually made it. 
mm-hmm. easier for the guy yep. to go now. You know what yep. I'm saying? Because if yep. you go to the G League, and even if it take you two years, same as college, but at least now you're making a little bit of money. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you're getting that exposure to the pro game. You know what yep. I'm saying? So if it does work out, now you go and you're way, you're way ahead of the curve. Yep, yep. Now you played for seven teams during your career. I want to h- highlight two of them. Mm-hmm. One, you mentioned the Knicks was your favorite team. Right. And you had some really good years there. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, y'all had talent. We had... Um, Duhan was, was, du- 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 was there. Uh, Quentin Richardson was there. Eddie Curry, but okay. Eddie Curry, you know. He okay, so we, when I got there, right, Mike had already like decided who he was gonna go in, and who he wasn't. You know okay. what I'm saying? So he had already alienated Marbury, Curry. Um, yeah, because Marbury wasn't there with you, right? Marbury was there too. He was he, there, but he got traded. He got traded to Boston, or they waved him one or the other. Okay, and that's so when he went really to Boston. With him. I never played the game with him. Okay, they never put him in the about, game. Okay. They, you remember uh, Mike had already yeah, said he they wasn't had playing. Out, yep. You know what I'm saying? So Mike had alienated some of the better players, like saying he wasn't dealing with him. David Lee was there with me as yep, well. Yep. Um, so you know, we really wasn't that talented. <laughs> I think we could. I think we could have been better because we played in the East. Yeah. But I just feel like you know. They was really just trying to set up the, you know, trying to get LeBron. You know what I mean? I think that was yeah, the focus. They didn't. That, even, they they didn't thought even, they were going to get. Yeah, him. they didn't even really want us to be that good. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. In my opinion, you know, because I, I felt like, you know, defense was never a priority there. And I'm just like, how can we win a game if we don't focus well, on any defense? If Mike D'Antoni was your coach, so right. we just saw him lose to Golden State in the Eastern Western Conference Finals. What was it like playing for him? It was cool. I mean, you know, he's not confrontational, right? So. You know, I wanted to stay a Nick. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I really wanted to stay a Nick. I was even willing to take a little bit of a pay cut, the whole thing. But for some reason, me and him never really saw eye to eye, and I never understood it. And you could put up good numbers, I there. put up great numbers, and I always used to ask. I'm like, Mike, what can I do more? What can I change? What would okay. you like to see? And he's, fine, fine, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> fine. It's everything's fine. It's all every time. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, it's fine. And then, you know, come, you know, towards the end of the season, his agent, guy named uh, Warren something. Oh, yeah, Warren Legary. Warren yeah, Legary. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm hearing stuff that he's telling teams that, you know, Mike hates me and this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, where is that coming from? Yeah. Like, dude, I'm the most coachable dude I felt ever. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Like, if a coach uh-huh. told me he didn't want me to shoot, I would not shoot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if, it, if, yeah. if we was going to win doing yeah. that. You know what I mean? So I just never understood why me and Mike really never hit it off because I know I was open to it because I mm-hmm. wanted to be a Nick. I loved his system. Like, I was everything say, was perfect. What was for that me. like playing I mean, in the system? It was like playing outside. You know, and, it, and and it's funny because I felt like Don Nelson's system was like free. Okay. Then Tony's was way, you had way more freedom, believe it or not, So what does crazy. he tell y'all? Like what, what is? I mean, his biggest is, thing is he just want, you know, he believes like uh, moving the ball, you know, the, the ball finds the correct energy to get the shots and okay. stuff like that, which I felt like it found me a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, you know, he he's very easygoing. You know what I mean? That system that you play in, like I said, it's so free flowing. It's so fast. That's why the point guards always have a blast in yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. if you can pass a little bit, you keep the, you know, he preaches keeping the floor so space, it just opens up the court, literally. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's why, I like, you know, I knew that adding CP was going to really take them to the next level. Because even though James played the point guard, James is not really yep. a point guard, even though he yep. get point guard numbers, you know what I'm saying? But to have a, a point guard that's been playing a point guard his whole life mm-hmm. at that level, I knew Houston was going to take that next step, which they did. Yeah, yeah. Now, I heard Dan Tony too, it, you might go months without hearing the word defense. In reference to your team, <laughs> That's is that true? That's like, facts. so y'all did y'all not just at all focus on it? Or? Nah, I mean, it's so weird. Like, we just didn't go over it. So, like on game days, we would do scouts. You know what okay. I'm saying? We would talk about. So you going through their off? You going yeah, there? Yeah, we'd talk okay. about schemes or whatever. But it was never like you know. I just you know on really good defensive teams, you drill it every day. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, on the good defensive teams I was on, like. We drilled it every day. Like, we knew it the back of our hand. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was never that kind of detail. If we did go over stuff, it'd be like five, ten minutes, if that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he, he was a firm believer that offense dictated the defense. Yeah. And he'd tell us that all the time. He'd be like, guys, ah, shoot the ball right. And it, 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 the ball be balanced, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was always some type of scheme that he had in his mind, and I yeah. guess it made sense because he was the coach. You know what I mean? But I remember me and Larry Hughes had went in, and uh, we talked to him about, you know, saying that as players, I swear to God, as players, we said that as captains, that we could get the players to come in 15 to 30 minutes early before practice, before he even started to go over defensive just stuff. Just without him. Without him. Y'all could do it. Okay. We could just do it or just have a coach out there, yeah, I yeah. swear. 
Dog, he was so upset that we came in there and said that to him. He just like, what the defense? Like, he just, I mean, Larry <laughs> never played again. He had to play me because I was averaging the dub. Yeah. Larry never played another game. <laughs> did he trade him no, right he didn't away? Trade him. He, he just, just did last whatever, wow. 18 games, whatever. Larry didn't even play a game. Because we was just tired of getting our ass kicked. You know, man. We just <laughs> no, got tired of getting, you know what I'm saying? We yeah, just got yeah. tired of it. We like, you know, we scoring 115 a night, but they getting 138. <laughs> it's a big, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. we knew that we, it was something we had to change. And we thought it was defensively because we knew we could score with anybody. Uh-huh, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. We th- That was the easy part. But we just couldn't never stop nobody. And I don't know if we just didn't have confidence as a team or what. But over there in Houston, from what I see, they're playing defense. So they it seems are. like he has a defensive coach. And, it's Bizdelic. Yeah, Jeff so that's what he saw. So, and, I mean, it's obvious. You know what I'm saying? Like, the game is two ends of the floor. You can't win on one end of the floor unless yep. you got guys that you know that's not going to miss. You yep. know what I mean? And that's yep. just not going to happen. So, you know, but I take my hat off to him now. Like, he definitely got a team that defends for sure. Yeah. Nah, they do. They do. Now, another team you played for was Indiana. Right. And um, met, you had some – y'all had some characters up in there. We had Steven Jackson on here. I know you good friends with Steve. Yeah, that's my brother. He said he was a blood while he was playing with he Indiana. Was. So he he said he had his red bandana mm-hmm. hanging in the locker. So did er, did all the players know what that meant, or did he advertise he was a blood? How could or how he not he... know? That's all he talked about. <laughs> oh, really? He shoot, whoop, bang, bang, da, 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 da. Some days I'll be scared to come in the locker room not knowing what Jack would be on. But no, nah, Jack... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the same person he is today he was when he played, but he was just times a thousand. Yeah, so if you think he's crazy now, just imagine like when he was like really young. Yeah, he's probably matured. Yeah, now, he's matured man. a lot, but yeah. he's still crazy. But like <laughs> when he was young, man, but yes, we all knew that he was a blood. We all knew that he was active. You know, not that he's out there shooting anything, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. when he go home, he go on the block with the homies. And yeah, you know, yeah. he was never afraid of that life, not at all. Were any of them around the team? No, nah, he never brought them around. Really? I mean, okay. the only time we would see him was uh, when we would be, like, in Houston, because that's where he's from. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So he'd have, like, there, a couple of them would drive up or whatever. But even them, like, you would see them, you wouldn't think they was, like, gang, yeah, gang yeah, bangers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They'd be cool. They had their little red flags or whatever. <laughs> but at the same time, they was out just to have a good time. Yeah. They weren't, like, trying to look for somebody to shoot or whatever. <laughs> or why, just trying to see if somebody had on blue. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. a lot of that life, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't live it because we're not in the trenches, but, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like a lot of it is just glorified through media and everything mm-hmm. else. And just some people got to live up to the hype. Were, are there many players that – I talked to Baron Davis once. He said he had been involved with gangs in mm-hmm. L.A. Are there many players that – uh, are involved in that at all? I don't think involved mean like I said, mean active or wearing flags, but I just think that it just depends on where you grew up. Yeah. Like, you can't get away from where you grew up. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, if, if you live in a blood neighborhood, neighborhood you know bloods. Mm-hmm. If you grew, grew up in a crip neighborhood, you know crips. You know what I mean? So, I think that just depending on where guys grew up, and, you know, a lot of these dudes, um, you know, they thank the gangbangers for, like, helping them get out. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because they so, protected them. Because they protected them and made sure they were straight and kept them out of trouble. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think that thing goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I think that a lot of times, you know, you know, even though people live that life, they also understand that there's a better life out there. And especially if they got a kid that's or in the neighborhood that could, you know, have a better life, yep. they're going to make sure that happens. Now, you also played with Meta, World Peace, or right. Ryan Artest at right. that time. What was that? He told me he's on the in the zone. He said he was crazy back then. Like, the stuff, he said you, the, the, the brawl, the malice in the palace, whatever, that was just, like, what people saw. Right. And I remember I covered the Knicks at that time, and he'd slam monitors. And right. Was it really a lot of stuff going on, volatile stuff? <sighs> no, nah, man, let me tell you something about Ron Artest, man. Number one, I want to say, like, he's one of the nicest, kindest, hardest yep. people you'll ever meet. Like, we'll give you the shirt off of his back. He... I think that he has behavioral issues <laughs> that may need medication, but it's always like in the moment. You know what I mean? Okay. I think if he's in a, you know, if he's just sitting around chilling, impulsive. like he won't, he'll never go there. It's impulsive, right? Yeah. It's just like, oh, sh-, and then he just goes. He, uh, you know, I, I grew up with Ron since I was 14 years old. So I've known him since I was a freshman. You know what I'm saying? First time I ever seen him in a tournament. So y'all played against you played So against I played him? against okay. him all the time. And even then, like, I always thought Ron was way older than me. Come to find out he's only a year older because he just kind of had that presence. You okay. know what I'm saying? The yeah. kind of way he used to talk to us or whatever. You thought he was just a lot older than us. But, you know, as far as with Ron's stories, like, I tell people one story. Like, he, uh, some Jordans came out. Okay. And we went to Indiana. And this is when the Nike town was in uh, Chicago. 
So he left shoot around and he drove to Chicago. To from get, Indiana. From, we had a game. I said he left shoot around, <laughs> right? He left shoot around and drove to Chicago. It's like a two hour drive, wow. right? To pick up the sneakers, right? And then he drives back for the game, right? So he gets there an hour and a half for the game. So whatever, he was able to get there and back because he had five hours. He made it back and forth, right? So he got the Jordans he on. To play in them. We go out and we play, right? Never forget this. Go out, play. Ron numbers was, I never forget this night because I had to look at the stat sheet just to make sure I don't get it wrong. He had 26 points. He had nine rebounds, seven assists, like four steals and four blocks, right? That game, wow. right? So, of course, he's player of the game. Yeah. My locker here, facing the TV and everything, he walks in, his locker's right here. He come in, he's like walking like, that's how he's like sounding, like he's walking, <laughs> right? So, he sits down next to me, and he go like unlacing his shoes off fast, right? Fast, fast, right? And he kick them off, boom, boom. When he kicks them off, I realize he don't have socks on, right? He played no, barefoot? Listen, that ain't even an issue. So, when he kicked them off, right, kicked the first one off, the left one comes off, it comes off, and it turns to the side, right? And I look, and I'm like, there's no insole in it either. So I pick up the shoes, right? <laughs> I pick up the right shoe, and I look at I look at the size, right? <laughs> it was a 14 and a half. Ron wore a 16. <laughs> he wanted to play in these shoes so bad that he wore shoes a size and a half too short with no wow. socks and no insole and dominated the game. Wow. So Ron wow. was definitely different. I mean, his feet must have been killing him. That's why he was kicking them off. Yeah, like he was killing them. I mean, they were like, he took them off. They was all red, whatever. <laughs> he played He played six days after heart surgery. Yeah. And he played two days after thumb surgery. So Ron was different. He was on another level. Ron was different. Well, the year he had the, the brawl, I mean, it was only seven games I think he played before right. that. But he was playing at an MVP level. Oh, no, he was killing. I mean, yeah. I, I really believe, and that's the first year I left because I was there and I got traded for Steven Jackson or whatever, and they was killing the East, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And even that game, they was beating the brakes off Detroit. Yep. Like yep. they Because we had Detroit number the year before. Reggie should have just dunked the ball instead of with yeah, that block. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we should have went to the finals that year anyway, the year I was there. But that next year, adding Jack and just a year older, Jermaine mm -hmm. was better, mm -hmm. everything, whatever. To me, they was the favorites to win it. I think that was the year for Indiana to get a championship in the yeah, NBA, for tough. sure. But Ron, you know, that whole incident just messed the whole thing up. Yeah. They was my favorites, for sure. Wow. Well, you so you we talked earlier about life after basketball. Mm -hmm. And so you are, I don't know what the technical term, cannabis distributor? <laughs> entrepreneur. It, right, entrepreneur, <laughs> all right. Yeah. A gondrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> so just tell me, I mean, you have a... a company did is it just it's not just medicinal marijuana right it's medicinal and it's recreational so okay for me like, I, it's all legal in california it's all legal in california okay. now and to me i don't understand what's the difference i don't understand why they make it a difference because i feel like even people that use it you know recreationally they use it for a reason you okay. know what i'm saying a lot and at the end of the day cannabis heals anyway you know what i'm saying so it's all medicinal to so me so you feel like dudes just because you know you grow up you think dudes just getting high they just want to get high right but do you, you feel like even then it has some type of it has that, healing but process. it has it definitely has a healing. It's 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 a healer. Number one, mm -hmm. our body has endocannabinoids in it. You know what I'm saying? So we're made to 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 interact with the cannabis plant. Okay. That's why when we smoke, we get high. You understand yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Because yeah. we have cannabinoids in our bodies already. You understand what I'm saying? People that smoke, they a lot of times they don't know why they're smoking. Just to say, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like sometimes people smoke just to go to sleep at night. Sometimes people smoke just to relax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what's the medicinal, like, how can we say it as a doctor, yeah, like, you need that? You know a, what I mean? A, yeah. And then when you take it a step further, it's like, the reason why, you know, we have our medicinal side of our business, right? And that's what we really dominated. And, you know, we have a concentrate company. So pretty much we grow flour to extract it down to making it, you know, medicinal grade, but it's a concentrate. So it's like, you know, normally if you just smoke the plant, you'll get like 30% of THC. But okay. when you smoke it as a concentrate, it may be 90%. And that's what you... And that's what I make, okay. correct. Okay. So that's why we make it for a lot of, you know, like uh, vets, um, people with terminal HIV and cancer and different things like that. Okay. But, you know, from the lifestyle part of it, I tell people all the time, like, you know, why is it okay for us to, you know, go drink a beer 
or drink a whole bottle of Grey Goose. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. there's no medicinal benefits from that, zero. At least with cannabis, like I said, your body heals from within from using the plant, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Now, it's up to you to realize what's your thresholds, you know what I'm saying? But when you think about it's it, how many- with alcohol. Yeah, how many people, how many people, and I'll wait, how many people do you know or stories that you've read that people got high and went and crashed their car and killed a family? Um, Not like drunk driving. Not at all, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just feel like this plant is just something totally different. It needs to be looked in a different light, you know what I mean? And that's why, you know, for me, with my advocacy and shit, stuff like that, I want to change the narrative. Okay. Because, you know, I was one of those people. Like, I grew up in Orange, New Jersey. We grew up in the same yeah. area. Like, yeah. I, we had people that smoked weed, and then we also saw down the alley see somebody smoking crack. But where I grew up, I thought if I smoked weed, I was going to end up that dude smoking crack. Yeah. And that's not yeah. the truth. Okay. That has nothing. It's you don't not, think it's a gateway. It is not a gateway. I mean, it's, it's proven that it's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we talk about, like, literature and stuff that's proven, that's proven. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But that's the stuff that nobody never wants wants to put out. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They just want to keep this ignorant connotation of what they think it is and that's not what it is. You know what I mean? This is the most dynamic plant in the world and I tell people all the time, like, to me, I don't understand how it could be a drug if you could take a seed, plant it in the ground and just water it every day and it grows. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That stuff that pharmaceutical companies that we're buying, those are drugs. Those are made yeah. in labs. Yeah. And then when we talk about all the side effects from them, you know, it's funny, I look at these commercials all the time and it's so nice. They're like people skipping in a park <laughs> and, you know, this will help this, that, and the third. And at the end, it's like side effects are yeah, yeah, sudden yeah. death, <laughs> internal <laughs> exactly. bleeding, eyeballs falling out. And I'm just like, <laughs> but I can't smoke some weed. You know what I'm saying? We know, like, none of that happened. This is natural, uh, bro. Like, you, there's no chemicals in weed. You know what I, I mean? You, so I it's just, we just have to change the narrative. And it's funny because we got to change it at the church level. You know what I mean? Like, and you know, for me, like with the education stuff that we're about to start rolling out, you know, it's going to be in the churches and then actually in the schools. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because, you know, I actually just did some DNA testing for my kids or whatever, because one of my kids potentially uh, has like the ADHD, whatever, okay. so, you know, okay. so we give her medicine and we can tell when she's off and when she's on it, but at okay. the same time, I hate her being on it because I don't understand what she's on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's studies now that show that cannabis can help that. Really? And that's all natural. Have so, you tried it? So we, I, we literally just did the DNA testing, so we waiting okay. for the results to come. I did it for everybody. I did it for my eight month year old son because from what I'm, from what I'm reading and you know, what I'm learning, it seems that Cannabis can also be a preventative from cancer and different really? things like that. Exactly. So if you get a certain amount of CBD in your body every day, there's studies that show that it can prevent cancer. You know what I'm saying? So wow. if that's the case, I want my kids to have the best shot yeah, to live yeah, the yeah. longest life as they can. So yeah. if I get some studies that show me that, you know, it's nothing for me to give my kids CBD every morning in their smoothies. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it doesn't get them high. And like I said, it heals from within. How long do you think, because I know you did, I found out that you had this business when you did an interview with David Stern, right. the former NBA commissioner. Yeah. And he was saying he thinks, he thinks it should be legal right. in the NBA. How long do you think before it is? And have you had any conversations with Adam Silver? Or do you know? I haven't, talk with, I haven't talked with Adam yet. I've been talking to Michelle and Krista okay. Chen over at the NBPA. Okay. Um, you know, in order for it to even get to Adam's desk, they're going to have to be on board first. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Especially to, because to of the collective doing, bargain agreement yeah. and stuff like that. So right now, the most important thing for me is to educate them and let them know what's really going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like CBD will be in all professional leagues within the next three years. Wow. I mean, they already changed it at the, uh, at the Olympic level. So well, now do they first have to legalize it in all the states? No, well, Just not because, really, not know, really because because what happens is with the farm with the farm act, um, there's on there's right now there's two states that can produce uh, CBD legally, which okay. is Kentucky and Colorado, right? And since it's coming from those two states, it can go to anywhere in the country. Okay. So if the NBA gets it from one of those two places, it's legal to be shipped. Okay. Anywhere okay. across the country and the players can fly with it and everything else. You understand okay. what I'm saying? So I think I don't think that'll be an issue, but I think that the biggest thing for them is they just need more information to know because, you know, at the end of the day, everything is perception and I get it. You know, I understand how big the NBA is. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we don't want is for Steph Curry to have a bad game and then they could be like, oh, Steph was smoking weed last yeah. night. You know what I'm saying? I'm using him because he's the one that we know is clean. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if they use CBD, and, 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 and the reason why I feel like it's so important to leagues is, is a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, when you think about, and you've, you've been around this for a long time, you think about what we go through to play a game. 
even regular seasons, well, like all the emotions. The pain, the, the, you talking about physical I'm talking about, mental, I'm talking about mental and physical. So okay. I, I start with mental. So mental, you know, you wake up from your nap, right? You whatever, take your shower, you get, you know, get your, your, your swag together, you're looking good. Yeah. Then you ride into the arena. Now you start thinking about the game. Got your music on, you starting to get yourself going. Then I got to guard Zebo tonight. Zebo like to do this, that, and the third, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Get to the gym, put, change my clothes, get ready, working out, get my body. I'm getting going now, whatever. Yeah. Now, before the game, we get all riled up. Now we go out, we go to play, whatever. Game start. I'm fighting with Zebo. Me and Zebo get into an argument. My teammate missing an assignment. I'm going crazy on him. The coach screaming at me. I'm telling the coach something. The fan going crazy. I'm telling the fan, sit down before I smack you. All that, right? So I'm going crazy, right? Yeah. Now the game is over. The game is over, but I'm not, I'm not done. You're like, still I'm hyped. still hyped up. I'm like, what's next? And I'm dealing with whatever. My knee hurting, whatever, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So what we do as players, and this is just the real, and it's not snitching or what, but yeah. a lot of times we tell the ball boy, go get me a bottle of Grey Goose. Go get me a bottle of Ciroc. Go get me something. You yep, know what I'm saying? Yep. I drink that to calm me down. You understand? Yep. So now, at the end of the day, like I said, we go back to we, us knowing that, you know, cannabis, excuse me, that alcohol has no benefits, you know what I'm saying, for the body. All it's going to do is what? Dehydrate me. Yep. So now I done had a couple of drinks. not saying I'm drunk. Mm-hmm. Get on the plane. Have a couple more drinks. Yep. Now I get to that next city. Now I'm definitely dehydrated. Now I go to bed, wake up. You know, I can't be the best that I can be. You know what I'm saying? Or just imagine if the NBA implements cannabis. Now you could give a guy a little drop, a little mm-hmm. uh, gummy. No, because I mean, yeah. it could be very small. You yep, know what I'm saying? Yep, what yep, you give yep, them. Yep. So now instead of giving them a Celebrex, you know what I'm saying? Or giving them some type you, of, you of took Vicodin. A lot of that. I, took, I took them for eight years. Seven and a half. I took two in the morning, one at night. Yeah. Every day. Even though during the summer, like, wow. and I knew, and, and I knew the side effects. You know what I'm saying? Even one of my teammates, Jason Colley, I'll never forget me. I was in Atlanta with him in the locker room, and we were sitting talking about because I was taking the Celebrex, and he was just like, "Damn, man, you take them every day, huh?" And I was just like, "Yeah." He was like, "Man, you, you know the side effects of all that stuff?" And he started telling me some of the side effects. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He died the next morning. That's right. Oh, the next morning. He died the next morning. Wow. Wow. Was, was he that, taking them? I don't know what he was taking. He was taking stuff for sure because he was dealing with injury. But he died the next morning. I know I cried like a baby when I, when uh, when David Fisdale called me and told me he died. That morning. I was on my way to practice, and I'm sitting there like I was just talking to him about that yesterday at practice. He died that morning. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like I said, you bring it back. So now, if you give a player an edible, let him take that. Now he's sitting, relaxed, mm-hmm. little THC mm-hmm. in it. What don't mm-hmm. hurt nobody? It's, mm-hmm. it's all about dosage. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you just take just enough. To make you just sit back and relax. Now, like I said, we know that cannabis heals. So it heals from within. So now I just feel like it gives you a better product to put on the floor the next night compared to a player sitting drinking a whole bottle of Grey Goose Mm -hmm. and then trying to go out and compete the next night. You know what I'm saying? So those are some of the things that we got to get through to these leagues for them to understand, like, that's what's really going on. And that, I swear to God, that's what's going on with cannabis. Like this thing, I mean, it makes everything, you know what I'm saying? Not only, I mean, the plant has almost 124 different properties that they, they're still finding. Okay. THC is only one out of 123. There's so many other things that that plant can help, you know what I'm saying, with, with just our overall uh, health, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. we just got to get more testing and that's going to come from the, you know, from the federal level because, you know, a lot of these companies, like just if, just say Viola wanted to tomorrow, go out and try to do a clinical trial. Yeah, like yeah. it cost us 15 million. I don't, we don't have that kind of money just to find, we might be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's a crazy investment, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, there's a lot of studies that show that, you know, cannabis is a healer, you know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, I feel like this plant can heal the world. You know, it, wow. it's, it's made me friends with people that I never thought that I would be friends with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and some people that I actually didn't get along with, you know what I'm saying? It was okay. a joint that brought us together and realized how much we had in common. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So with, with yeah, you, when you talk to NBA players, right? what do they, they know what you're doing. Right. And they, they, I'm sure they know David Stern has said they could legalize, you right. know, legalize it or should. What do they, are they excited about that? Do they want that? And what would, because a lot of dudes do it recreationally right. in the league. but They're doing it do medicinally, you, but they don't know. So you, you feel that. You feel like they ain't just doing it just to, to get high. It's, it's helping your body. It's, it's helping them, man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because, like I said, when you use, when you use the plant sometimes, like you don't even realize, you'll be like, you know, smoked or whatever, and then you be like, "Oh snap!" Oh, you and you feel better. I'm telling you, 
Okay. I'm telling you, you I did, see you it. Didn't use, did I you use it, it when you played I, I it? I did up? not use it. I didn't use it until the end of my career. I didn't know. I was yeah. taking Celebrex. But if I would have known better, I might have been one of those guys that did do that, that did use it. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because yeah. it's for sure, like, I'm convinced that it's definitely an alternative way. Now, I'm not saying it's going to cure everything. NFL players have said the same they thing. They need it. You know what I mean? And, and the reception that I'm getting from the players is literally like, Yo, thanks, big homie. That's amazing. Keep doing that, man. We need that. Mm -hmm. It helps me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It helps me. It helps wow. me sleep. It helps me do this. It helps me do that. It calms me down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, they need, they want it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, I, and like I said, you know, once we just have the correct education on it, and then it just comes down to dosaging, how you do it. You said it. it's about 70 to 80% of dudes doing it anyway in the league. Correct. Marijuana. And they're so, off seasons. Yeah. And they're off seasons. Mostly in off seasons. And they're off seasons they're using it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I said, you just look at the you just look at the country in general, like, you know, I think that now is like almost seventy percent of the country that is okay with cannabis. You know what I mean? Like yes, it's legalize, the players, it's their girlfriends. They like the girlfriends like vape pens mm -hmm. and the girlfriends like edibles and mm -hmm. all that. So, you know, it's off season. I'm a pop one, too. Mm -hmm. I'm a smoke a vape, too. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. I just think that uh, it's, it's happening. And like I was even telling you, like from the church level, you know, like even with my grandma, my grandmother was 80 years old, 81 years old when I first had her try cannabis. Okay. You know what I mean? And when you talk about somebody that's straight and narrow, and I told you, like, if she not going to heaven, we all going to hell for <laughs> sure. Like, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah. And for her to use it and now need so it she's every still, day. I read the article where you said she used it. So she's using it regularly. No, my grandmother smoked it. Like, when I had her try it, I had no knowledge about cannabis. Okay. I just had her try it because of what I read in the paper in Denver. That it, it's help, that okay. it helps with glaucoma. Okay. So she was telling me how bad her eyes were hurting. And I was just like, Grandma, I just read something two days ago in the newspaper about how cannabis helps glaucoma. She asked me, what's cannabis? I said, uh -huh. marijuana weed. She said, reefer? <laughs> I ain't smoking you no know, Jersey. She reefer. Yeah, yeah, I ain't yeah, smoking yeah. no reefer. I'm like, nah, grandma, I'm just, I said, I just, I have no, I don't know if this is going to work or not. And, and yeah. like, my mother was kind of mad at me that I had, that I was thinking about <laughs> trying to get her to try it. My okay. mom was like, Al, you serious? Why would you get, you? Well, she's yeah, 80. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm like, well, grandma, I'm like, ma, I read it in the paper. So next day, you know, she said no that day. The next day came home. She was sitting in the kitchen in pain. I said, Grandma, you sure you don't want to try it? I was like, this be between you and I. I swear, <laughs> I said, this be me and you. I won't tell nobody. She was just like, you know what? I'm in so much pain today, I'll try anything. So I called my boy who had a card in Denver. I said, yo, can you go get, I said, now nah, look, I don't know nothing. So I'm like, yeah. go to the dispensary and ask them what they have for glaucoma. So he went, he came to the house. He had a, a, he had a, a jar of uh, Vietnam Kush. He had like an eighth of it, just a small amount. So he had a vaporizer. We vaporized it, took her in the garage, and um, you know, she started smoking it or whatever. And uh, I took her downstairs. I went and took my pregame nap. Woke up an hour and a half late. I said, before I jumped in the shower, I said, let me go check on her first. Yeah. Go downstairs, I knock on the door, and her back was to the door, and she was looking down. And I was like, Grandma, are you okay? And she turned around, uh, and, I, I, and she was crying tears. And she said, I'm healed. She said, you know, I haven't been able to read the words in my Bible in over three years. And I'm like, Grandma, you're not even reading your Bible? Wow. She like, yeah, so like, I'm crying, she crying. I go and I wow. hug her or whatever, and she just like, I can't believe this. And she's just like, my world just opened up. Like, she's like, everything is so bright. Like, it like, mm. it messed me up. Like, I, I remember <laughs> riding to the game that day. It like took me forever, because I'm sitting there. And remember, I grew up thinking it was yeah, all bad. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, wow, like, I can't believe what it just did for my grandmother. <laughs> that, and I mean, that's what got me going. And you now know she's I mean? still, she's still alive? She's still alive. She's she still, still lives in Fedville, North Carolina. She smokes vape pens. So okay. she don't smoke any flour now. Okay. Um, you know, she uses it every day. She has dementia now okay. or whatever, so that's kind of tough. But uh, even with her dementia, she remember to try. She remember to have she a pen every better. day. Yeah, and I and even on our website that we're about to relaunch, uh, I have her telling my mother the story that same day mm -hmm. or whatever. My mother taped it or whatever, so I'm gonna have that on the website when the website okay. first start. You'll hear her telling her first encounter wow. with cannabis. That's interesting, man. That's, yeah. Now, when, when I read the story you wrote in the Players Tribune. You were talking about how, you know, growing up in Orange, mm -hmm. the cops a lot of times would just come and harass y'all as kids. Right. I don't know if you say every day or every right. week or what it was. Talk to me about that, because you, you mentioned how later on you met in the NBA, mm -hmm. you met people who were like, man, they're getting high all the time in right. the suburbs and in college campuses, mm -hmm. which I agree. Right. Like, it's actually proven they're, they're using just as much if not more drugs on college campuses right. and suburbs yep. than they are in the hood mm -hmm. you know but 
the the war on drugs was focused in the hood. Right. So te- a lot of people, when they see, you know, you see what's going on with the police brutality, Sterling right. Brown, Fibocephalosia, non-players mm-hmm. as black men. Um, a lot of people who haven't encountered anything like that or aren't from those neighborhoods, they can't fathom that the police might mistreat people like right. this. So I think it's important for people to hear it from people they respect, people right. they looked up to, you know, whether they're athletes, whatever, businessmen, entertainers. But tell me about what you encountered, right. you know, kind of as a kid, just yeah. regular Yeah, I mean, it's funny, like, as even growing up, and it was even when I was in the NBA, when I played for the Knicks, I had an encounter with the police at a charity event. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you so know. So what happened? Tell me so about that. So I'm, I'm at Russell Simmons' uh, charity event for when Haiti, the first Haiti thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And literally, it happens or whatever. Um, you know, he has, a, he has an event. Go in the event, make a little donation or whatever. I come walking out, and I had a driver when I played for the Knicks. Okay. So my driver's sitting. He's outside the truck, though, and he's a young dude. I like to, I like to hire from within my people. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep, so that's yep. how I hire people. Yep. So I hire my best friend's brother to drive him. Okay. So he's outside the car, and I see the police, like, sweating him or whatever, right? So I just walk over. You know, I'm a Nick. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I walk over. The guy, the cop that turned around had a Boston hat on, had a Boston Celtics hat on, I swear <laughs> to God. So I walk over and I'm like, uh, I'm like, you good, Mo? And before he could say something, the cop said, he's not none of your effing business. And I said, well, it is my business. I said, this is my truck and that's my driver yeah. or whatever. He's like, who you think you are? And he starts pushing me, right? So now you're a little dude or whatever, but I'm smart enough to know. And he yeah, had like yeah. six cops with him or whatever. So I like, you know, I back up the first push. He pushed me again. I back up the second one. So the third time he pushed me, I stood strong or whatever. He's like, oh, you a tough guy. I said, I'm not a tough guy, but I said, I play for the Knicks or whatever. I'm at a charity event and I'm just trying to figure out why you got my drive outside the car. Yeah. And he started going crazy. Push me, turn me around, push me up against the uh, the, the wall. So like the whole you show. So Nick had no, no effect on Just a whole show. Like a whole show pushed me. He didn't put me in handcuffs, but just like flexing his muscles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know what I felt that was about. You know what I'm oh, saying? Because yeah. I'm yeah. a 6'10 black man. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? But when you talk about like growing up in Jersey, like it was always when we was together. So, you know, like I grew up in a complex of, pre- of probably like 50 apartments, right? Upstairs, two levels or whatever. So mad kids and we all lived mm-hmm. there, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we did everything together. We played kickball, we played baseball till we broke somebody's window. <laughs> uh, we did all that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But then the corner store was the hangout spot because that's where Street Fighter was and NBA Jam okay. and Shinobi. Video games. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's where everybody going to play. We only could play if the older dudes wasn't playing. If they was down there back there, we had we couldn't go back yeah, there. But yeah. if they wasn't there, we go get our game on. So, you know, a lot of times if they back there, we, we stand outside the store waiting our turn or whatever. And now how and old are you at this point? I'm like, uh, like... 11, 12, okay. you know, okay. 10, 11, 12, or whatever that age. And, you know, we out there chilling. The next, you know, the police car roll up, and we ain't nothing thinking nothing of it. And they mm-hmm. like, get out. Who got something in their pocket? Who got something? And we're like, we ain't got nothing. <laughs> get up against the wall. Run through our pockets. You know what I'm saying? Like, for nothing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, but at the end of the day, it spooked me, though. It worked. If it was a scare <laughs> tactic, it worked, because I know I didn't want to go to jail. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I've seen them do that to the older guys, yeah. and they get yeah. locked up. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we made sure we never had nothing, but we just see it all the time. But it was normal. You know what I'm saying? How it often wasn't, would it happen, Ruffin? I mean, well, I would see it all the time. I would yeah. see it all the time. Like I said, the police station was right up the street anyway. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you even catch some cops is just walking doing that. They didn't even have to be in the car. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. For us, it was normal, you know what I'm saying? We didn't even realize that we was being picked on. I didn't realize until I got older, like, that wasn't right. That that ain't a part of everybody's life. That's not how it's <laughs> supposed to be. And then we talk yeah. about, like you said, the stories, you know, all these people that's in the cannabis space, I tell people all the time, like, you know, when I go to a lot of these events, I'm the only person that look like me a lot of times, like, yeah. most of the time, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. then I'm in here with these, you know, you know, young, you know, white males or whatever, and they're just bragging, yeah, I sold pounds on college campus, I sold this, I sold that. And I'm like, yeah, what the police? Said, police? What? For what? Us? What they gonna mess with us for? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's that's how different it is. And you yeah, think about man. talk about the college campuses, like you can even look at the arrest records of like black colleges compared yeah. to black universities. Colleges. It's yeah, just said. Yeah. There's University. no arrest. There's yeah. none. But on the, but you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, you know what I'm saying, the war on drugs was definitely real. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It was it was aimed at people of low income and different yep. things like that, because yep. weed is cheap. You know what yep. I'm saying? That was our cheap way of getting hot. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Then crack came. You know what yep. I'm saying? So it was just definitely aimed at that, and that's why a lot of the rest, 
you know, why we was, you know, picked on a lot, you know? You, you exactly. I mean, I went to Oberlin College, which was a, you know, predominantly white school, and it was kids, diplomats, kids, rich kids, getting what, high all the time with no, you know, you wasn't worried about you the cops. Because you think about it, and that's what I'm talking about when, when you talk about just, like, people who have access to stuff. Because if you get one of those diplomat kids pop, mm -hmm. they're going to get off. Oh, it's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah. Yep. You yep. lock us up, we're going down. Yep. And yep. then when we come home, like we, and that's what that's what's so corrupt about the system, you know, a la Meek Mill and all that. Yeah. It's like you give us you 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 give us a sentence, we we complete the sentence, and then we come out, but the sentence is still on top yeah, of yeah. us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we can't, you don't even give us an environment to really learn from our mistake because mm -hmm. once we're a felon, we can't work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even like in the cannabis space, because all cannabis, all drug related. Uh, arrest is a felony. So, so you can't do the legal cannabis. You if can't. You, you really? can't work in the space. The only place that they're doing it right now is in Oakland. So, in Oakland, according to the licensing process, if you had a drug conviction, cannabis related, yeah. it actually gives you an advantage to get a license. Oh, really? Right. But then, of course, the people that are operating already, they're suing. They're saying, why do why do these people get an advantage? Wow. You understand? And then I'm like, and I'm looking at them like they created this industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This industry was made off their backs while yep. they was locked up. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So like we have to we have to fix that system and like, you know, I'm part of this thing too where we do the expungements and stuff like that, you know, so that we can give these guys that come home an opportunity to work in the space because to me they were the pioneers. Man, you know, I mean? you know and that's like I I don't know much about I I I don't smoke weed just recreationally, but right. I don't know much about you know, the medicinal prospects and uh, uh, aspects of it, but you, you obviously articulated it well. But the one, so it seems like it's, it's a fine thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's a natural thing. It's, it's got, you say it got healing purposes, but it does bother me when I know that so many people, particularly black men, mm -hmm. have been locked up right. and their lives changed Forever. for doing something that now Mostly white people, like you said, you're one of the few blacks doing right. it, and now it's legal. Right. And it's fine, and it's, you know, in a few years, it's going to be like selling tobacco. And, dude, and the other thing they're you doing know? that's sucking is that, is that uh, they're monopolizing the process, too. You know, it's like, it's not even like, you know, minorities, or let's just say blacks, forget, let's just yeah. call it what yeah. it is. Black people, they don't even have access to the capital to even try so to get one legally. of these licenses, man. You don't, even, you don't have it because, like Michigan, I'm going through the process in Michigan, right? It, I had to show $2 million in an account working capital before just they would even started. accept. Yeah, just for them to accept my likes. The first, I had to send them my bank statement that wow. showed I had $2 million. How many black people we know that had yeah. that? None. Exactly. They, 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 they <laughs> some. None. Exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. they're monopolizing the process. And I'm, you know, like a state like Florida, Florida, they're requiring that uh, you have 25 years of, uh, of um, agricultural experience. What? Uh, again, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Most yeah. black people haven't even owned a piece of property <laughs> yeah, 25 exactly. years. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's a lot of changes that need to be made. And it's funny because as soon as we try to voice that, those, those issues, then all these lawsuits come out of nowhere. Because they say, just want, they want it all. You're involved with, I, I don't remember what the group was, but one of the legal groups that's... MCBA. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So are you, are you trying to bring those issues up? No, that's all we do. So we did National Lobby Day last year at the end of the year. So we went and we went to the Senate and we talked to all the states that have legalized cannabis okay. or whatever. And we voiced our opinions and we told them and a lot of them agreed. They was like, you're right. It's, this okay. is not right. You know what I'm saying? Because if, have if to they don't out, fix it, then it's going to be. Then we just never going to yeah. get a seat at the table. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and all, yeah. all we asking is just make it competitive where you could just give us an opportunity. I mean, it's so many. Think about all the industries that we're not a part of. You know what I'm saying? We And we'll never have an opportunity. Yeah. So I just feel like this one is one that, like I said, you know, because of a lot of black people getting incarcerated and being locked up because of this is the reason why it is, it is where it is today. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is give us an opportunity to participate in this industry. Yeah, it's so question, new yeah. that you can do that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's yeah. brand new. So even one of the other things I'm about to launch um, with, a H, uh, with, a, with a HBCU, I'm about to do an entrepreneurship program okay. or whatever. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to start in Florida or whatever. Which school? So, do you know which school? Um, it's probably going to be FAMU okay. or whatever. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to, these kids that's coming there for agriculture, we're going to have some of you interested in cannabis come and learn in pretty much my curriculum yep, or whatever, yep. how I got into the space. You can learn how to grow, you can learn how to manufacture, you can learn how to be on the retail side or the technology side. 
And then what I want to do with these kids is I want to take these kids. And since I have, you know, I'll be in five states, five to six states by the end of this year. I want to deploy these kids to my locations and okay. let them do internship program. Okay. And if they shake out, then they work for yeah. Viola. You know what I'm saying? So those That's are the ways good. that I want to give back, you know what I'm yep. saying? And try yep. to, and, you know, and just try to, you know, empower the community, you know what I'm saying? That has been like devastated behind. Behind, we, no bro. question. We. People talk about the family <laughs> black blur breakdown in the black family. A lot of that dates back to the 80s. Right. When, you know, we crack all that stuff devastated the black family when right. everybody else was doing it just as much it just selling as much. it just as much Higher using level. it just as much and but they weren't going after them right you know what i'm saying so yep. i feel you you involved you entre as you say entrepreneur so yeah. you got more than viola going what mm -hmm. other some other things you involved uh, i'm doing in? some real estate stuff um you know i'm part of this company called mosaic um, where we do uh it's pretty much like hard money lending almost okay. but for real estate okay um you know uh you know, triple A uh, real estate. Um, I also have some a technology company uh, called Claim It okay. uh, that I'm a part of or whatever. So it's just a platform pretty much for like new businesses to, um, you know, pretty much advertise okay. through giving away free stuff. You know what I'm really? saying? So okay. um, it, it'll, you know, in order for you to claim whatever, whatever the gift is, you have to watch a 30 second commercial. So that's all your way, right, you know, right, just to see so you can learn about the company before yeah. you actually claim it. Okay. Uh, what else I got going on? Um, I may be doing something with some clothing. Um, and, you know, then I also... Uh, like a clothing line or something? Yeah, like a clothing line or whatever. Cannabis cannabis driven okay. or whatever. But like t-shirts? Yeah, t-shirts like, okay, and stuff okay. like that. We got that going on. And uh, what else I got going on? I think that's it for now. Well, how did yeah. you... So what... I mean, it sounds like cannabis, this business is your passion. Right. Um, and you said you just kind of fell into it. How many, do you see a lot of ex-players that don't find that, that thing that can replace basketball? Yeah, I see it a lot, man. I'm friends with a lot of them, man. They're still trying to figure it out. You yeah, because you young when you retire. Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, I'll t really, 40 is halftime. It's how you yeah, sort of yeah, look at it because yeah. you sort of live to 85 yeah. years old now. You know what I mean? Not that many tall old guys <laughs> walking around like that, but... Uh, you know, maybe I got another 35, but yeah, it's just like, you know, it's like, what's next, you know, and, and it's scary sometimes because, you know, especially because when we play in the NBA and especially play as long as I did, because mm -hmm. you get used to this routine. Like I, when I retired, I was playing the league half my life. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So that's before right. I was that's a kid right. being taken care of, listening to, on my mother's routine yeah. or the school routine to now the NBA routine to now having no ro no routine. You know what I mean? So it can be scary, man. And I, and I tell people all the time, I think that that's the reason why a lot of players get divorced and stuff like that, because you have so much free time now. You're just around yeah, your wife all the yeah, time yeah, yeah. and the kids. And, <laughs> like, I've, you know, I've had, to that. I've had players or teammates even talk about, like, how they don't like their kids sometimes because <laughs> they didn't really know them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it's tough, man. And if you don't have something, man, to kind of keep that normalcy, of, you know, kind of traveling a little bit, just, you know, being busy. I mean, it could be, I think it could be a scary world to live in, you know, until you yeah, figure that out. Yeah. And, you know, ain't nobody really giving nobody no handouts at this point, you know, and you, and we all think sometimes like we always can coach, like coaching's yeah, right yeah, there, yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. so competitive. It's and then, hard to get it. And, then it, and it's being dominated by guys that didn't play. The analytics, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's your take on the analytics? Because they're, they're, I, I think it's softened a little bit, but I know mm. a few years ago it felt like there was this battle between the basketball guys right. who had played – even if they didn't, weren't NBA players but played college level, you know, they, they knew the game right. versus the analytics guys, some of whom didn't even play in high school. Right. Like, what's your feel on, on that? I think, it's, I think it has a place for it. I think as much information you can have as a coach, organization, or whatever, mm -hmm. the better. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I think you need analytics, especially because they show that it works. But uh, I just still feel like the game is still, a lot of it is still, still touch and feel. You know what I mean? Like, you can't look at a paper and say, oh, well, this combination yeah, worked, yeah, yeah. but one of those players out there is cooking right now. Yeah. So you just take him out the game because another five that you had, you know, yep. seven minutes ago was more successful. You know what I'm saying? So I think that, uh, I mean, I, like I said, I think it's worth it. I think it's good for the game. But I just think that if you try to make all your decisions off of that, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. One thing you said in uh, the, one of the articles I read about you is that a lot of players are, and this was related to why players use the marijuana. Mm -hmm. A lot of them dealing with anxiety and stress and all that. What is it like? How did you deal with as a player the criticism 
whether it's in the newspaper, whether it's talking heads like myself, debate show, you know what mm -hmm, I mean? When right. they're ripping you or even just the fans right. booing you, whatever. How does a play, do you guys just ignore it, not right. even read or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How do you deal so with that? That's that, tough. That's how I dealt with it. Just like, not. I just didn't wouldn't read. I wouldn't read it. I wouldn't watch it. You <laughs> so know did you I'm watch saying? like Sports Center and and shows like that? Did I, you? I did. You know when I when I played well. You know, I learned that from him, uh, Chris Mullen as well. Chris Mullen should tell me little stories or whatever. You know, just like you know, you just got to play the game and just have fun. You know what I'm saying? You gonna have good ones. You are gonna have bad ones yeah. or whatever. But always remember, it's a game. Yeah, nobody's yeah. dying after the game. Nobody's going to lose their money after the game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's a game, so just go have fun. And then, like, you know, the commentators and stuff like that. You got to remember, when I came up, it wasn't as much as now. Yeah, yeah. So this is a totally yeah. different ball yeah. game because now you go to Twitter, you got a million people no. tweeting about you, you got Instagram. So I don't know because we so heavy on our phone now. I don't know if I could have got around you it. You could avoid it. But yeah. back then, we could get around it because it was all on TV only. Yeah, you know it's I mean? true, man. And I, that's one reason I give LeBron a lot of credit. Right. Like, even I think Jordan is the GOAT. LeBron, I feel like, is second. But Jordan didn't have to deal with all this stuff that LeBron has to deal with. Right. So I give him a lot of credit See, for Bron, that. See, Bron, the expectation that has been on Bron since the year he stepped in the NBA, yes. Michael didn't have that. Michael no, never right. had that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I'm finally to the point where I'm willing to say LeBron is the best player ever. Really? And the only see, it's just two different things. Number one, they play two different positions. Right. So that's one thing. It's hard to judge them. Right. The, the only thing that Mike had over the only thing Mike had over Brian was this. I feel I feel like those older players, not Reggie Miller or whatever, but most players like when they got to that arena, they was tying their shoes up. They was thinking in their mind like, oh, my God. I got to guard this Jordan. black cat today. <laughs> I don't think guys fear LeBron like that. Really? I don't think so. That's just my okay. opinion. I don't think, I just think these, because they all friendly and everything. Like, see, Mike ain't have no contact with him. Like, Bron yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to Ben Simmons before the yeah. game. Good job. I love what you're yeah. doing. So it's different. So, like, it's almost like playing and you competing against your friend. <laughs> Mike had no friends. You know what I'm saying? Mike didn't deal with them. They ain't know what Mike was thinking that night. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I just feel like the fear that Mike had on players, LeBron don't have on play. I feel like even Kobe might have had some of that fear in players. Okay. But what LeBron does, man, at his size, the fact that he can guard everybody. He's Magic Johnson. He's MJ a little bit. He just don't have the killer instinct, but he really does have the killer instinct. Would you look at the numbers? The numbers don't lie. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. every time, most times you need him to step up, he's right there. Especially you know what lately, I mean? Yeah. And then like you just think about you've asked him to become a better shooter. You've asked him to become a better post player. Like, he does, every, and he dominates every part of the game. Like, at this point now, like, what is his weakness? Other than free throw shooting, you can't say anything. And that's, he's still and that decent. that ain't that bad yeah, he's in his 70s, in his 70s, 70s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. he has no holes in his game, and Mike didn't really have no holes in his game either. But Mike couldn't go guard Patrick Ewing. Yeah, LeBron could good. guard Patrick Ewing. Mike couldn't go guard ha Hakeem shaking. Bron could go guard him and mm -hmm. actually, like, make it tough on him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So with all that being said, he the best, man. Wow. He the best. That's, that's saying a lot. That's saying just, a lot. I, I, so we you want to talk about when, finals when people, and all that, say, but who cares about that? Finals, I mean, he still got championships. Why? Because he didn't win every last one of them? Oh, yeah. So what? Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. I mean, he playing, you know... I mean, which I, I would say the one that he lost that he should have won was the Dallas one yeah. for sure. Yeah. He should have yeah. won that, so I hold that against him. But, like, you look at those teams in Cleveland and go, I mean, come on, look at what Golden State has. It's like, you much. losing to Golden it's State, that's not, I mean, that's tough. That's yeah. like him playing. I don't even know if Mike would have beat Golden State every year. He didn't beat a team as good as Golden State. I and, I, and he I'm definitely wouldn't have wouldn't done have it been, three years in a row. Yeah, you know what I'm they saying? Like, they didn't play a team. He there weren't really like super that. teams right. with Mike. So it was just a different game. But I just feel like LeBron's game, he can play in that league with Mike and them. You know what I'm saying? The way he plays now, like, I mean, think about it. And you, he can't dribble. He has no moves. He has 50, 15, and 12 yeah, yeah. every night. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just amazing to me, bro. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, good That's luck right. with everything. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate All it. Right. Welcome to another segment of one of my favorite parts of the podcast, Knock Down Jay, where I get to knock down Jay's opinion. You know, I heard from people out there. They missed me last week. They were like, where's the debate? Where's the discussion? Broussard. Hey, we got to do this in the offseason. Miss you or miss me? I think they miss me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm I know it's your sure goat sard. That's what they call you online, Chris Goat Sard. I got my faithful, my yeah. loyal Hey, fans. can I take a quick shot at your playoff list real quick? Yes. Um, 
I, you cannot have James Harden ahead of Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell was phenomenal for Utah against OKC and then against Houston. I, I actually thought Harden had a bad postseason. I don't want to go too deep here. This is not one of our debates. Yeah. But I didn't think James Harden was particularly good. 24% from deep against the Warriors. Yeah, it's tough when your best, your second best player misses game six and seven. This is true. So your last two games. So think about the Warriors. You got three, we can argue, four people to worry about on offense. Do you have to worry about Draymond right now? <laughs> Even if you take him out, though. You got three all-time great shooters to worry about on offense. Who else did you have to worry about? On well, Trevor Ariza, uh, I can't but, like that. But I, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. that's a load yeah. on Harden. It was, it was too so much. I, he, I mean, Michael Jordan only shot 41% against Seattle in the finals. Mm -hmm. He only shot 43% against Utah. In Michael his last Jordan finals. is human. Is that that's a fact? So I'm, I'm just saying. Sometimes you know, when everything is focused on you, your shooting yeah. percentage might be that not be that high. All right, let's get to the debates, Mr. Broussard. Cavs Warriors game one is Thursday night. We're recording this on Wednesday morning. Let's just go big picture here. LeBron pulls the upset, the magical shocker Warriors who look lethargic at times against the Rockets. Let's say they don't show up. You know, they felt like that was the championship and they just forget to show up and LeBron rolls. If Forget LeBron is able to take down Edit these that Warriors, part out. they're, they're going to show up. They're going to they, show up. If but show if up, they don't. But if he beats them, no, just give it. If he LeBron beats, beats the Warriors in this series, are you ready to make him the GOAT above Michael Jordan? I say yes. Remember, heavy underdogs in this series. According to Las Vegas, the Cavs are the biggest underdogs in the finals in 16 years. Okay? He's out, man. We don't know about Kevin Love's no status for game one. Or going forward. Even with love. And this would be the second time he took down this Warriors dynasty. I mean, listen, Michael Jordan accomplished great things. We're not going to dispute that. But what LeBron has done here this season, I think if a win over the Warriors in this series, a finals victory, you got to make him the GOAT. The GOAT. I mean, you close. said the GOAT. The, yeah, number. I mean, it's close I, already. I love LeBron. LeBron is second on my list all time. Is it a 1A, 1B, no, or 1-2? No, he's just second. Okay. It's 1-2. If he were to beat the Warriors this year, then it might be a 1A. Ooh. I still would not put him ahead of Jordan just because I'd want to see a little bit more. Four, that'd be four titles. Five losses. Hey, don't worry about the no, losses. I know. He's I'm, made I'm not, eight I'm not using finals. that. That would be nine trips to the finals, which obviously is more than Michael, and it would be four t victories. Like you said, two over. I, I don't know if we could call them an all-time great team if they lose, but it'd be a, certainly a great team. Okay. Um, a better team than Jordan ever faced in the finals. No doubt. Um, but I, I would not put him ahead of Jordan. I might – you know, see how it plays out. I might be willing to go equal, but I, I think in my gut I would have Jordan 1, LeBron 1A. And I'd want to see what the rest of LeBron's, you know, last few years played out. Because here's the thing. Jordan was perfect once he started winning. 6-0. and oh, He never got taken to a game 7. You know, Michael did some things. He led the league in scoring 10 straight times. Right. And led the league in steals three times. LeBron's only led the league in one category one time, scoring once. You know, Michael, like, Michael kept everyone in his era, once he started winning, from winning championships. And that's, that's your Charles best point. Charles Barkley, yeah. David Robinson, Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon, Let me, can I Patrick add, jump Ewing, so he on and so He also forth. did catch when he ascended – Caught Magic Johnson at the tail end because he had to retire early. Beat Magic once and then Magic was done. Uh, never faced Jabbar, who's an all-time great of yours. Uh, Larry Bird's back was broken. Yeah. He had the double they Achilles. Older, they so were... Jordan did benefit a little bit from that. Um, I got to say, uh, when I you look at competition, from it I know you like those Sonics just, teams you know, and those well. Jazz teams, but... Man, these Spurs, the Spurs dynasty that LeBron took down, this Warriors team. Well, I mean, that, that and if Spurs you look back, team was a bit older. Uh, Duncan wasn't quite himself. I mean, they needed a when miracle. They Ray Allen three. No, I know, to, but when and see, that's one of the things that like people will look at if LeBron were to win this championship, and rightly so, look at it and say, man, he carried. A bunch Jeff of, Green yeah, and uh, Rodney a bunch Hood. Of mediocre, I don't yeah. even want to say stiffs. I won't disrespect them. He carried a bunch of mediocre players to a title over a superstar-laden team. But 
you also have to look at this. When LeBron had superstars with him in Miami, they were the most talented team in the league they didn't probably win it twice. four straight times. They only won two. Yeah. That's the oh, thing. I love only two. No, I'm I saying mean, do you only, know only, play, only well, Charles that, Barkley would kill. I, he would maim and murder for one. See, that's that's making my argument for Jordan. It does. Because what we're seeing this postseason, and really just since Jordan retired, is how incredibly difficult it is to win a championship. Mm-hmm. LeBron James has had a career that no one else has had other than a Michael Jordan. And yet he's only won it three times in 15 years. Uh, in Miami, he had the most talented team in the league probably for four straight years, and they only won it twice. Uh, st- we look at this Warriors team. Look how much they're struggling just to get there four times and win it three times and Remember, in four Jordan, years. after those three, he took retired. a year and a half off. Yep. I think and that was massive. Back, but he won it six times in essentially six years. Think about that. Well, we're are we, we going to count struggle. that loss to the Orlando Magic? I mean, if you want to yeah, count. you kind of have to. He played 17 games that season. Anybody that thinks he was Michael Jordan. Still had his after coach. A year, still had Pippen. After a year and a half of playing baseball, he comes back and is playing with the best players in the world. And he wasn't himself. And he wasn't expected to be himself. He was still great, but he wasn't Michael Jordan. And that's why they lost. So I don't really count that. And, and he for came the Jordan, back the next yeah. year in shape and, and, and swept Dustin that same Magic so, team. So to also add for the Jordan fanboys out there, LeBron just had to go to seven against the Pacers and the Celtics. Okay, that Celtics team was missing its two best players. That's what I'm saying. In that's LeBron's, not, no, no, I'm saying yeah. that's not a great. No, no, this is for defense. the Michael Jordan side. Yeah, Michael Jordan went to the seventh game only twice in that six-year run in the East, like Indiana. against the Pacers and the Knicks. Yep. And like LeBron had it twice in a postseason. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're the Jordan fans, you got a lot well, of you ammo. Nit, you nitpick right. when we're talking about all-time Ultimately, greats. Ultimately, it's got to come down to the things. eye test because you're not going to convince someone to come to your side. That's where we are in here's society. Here's the other thing. But here's the thing with the eye test. Because let's go to football. I could legitimately say, and you could too, <laughs> I've never seen anybody play quarterback as well as Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Right? You could say that. I've made that but argument. When we, yeah. Okay, but when we discuss the GOAT, He's, He's not. not even in the conversation. Your accomplishments team-wise in football is more of a team sport than even basketball. Your accomplishments team-wise have got to be at a certain level to be in the GOAT in conversation. The yeah. And so, yeah, LeBron's got three, and that would be four. I think that gets him right there, like you said, 1A. But Michael still, I still would give Michael a okay. slight My, edge. Uh, yeah. Slight. We'll see. All right, moving on to the next topic, Chris. Uh, this has been polarizing. Uh, I, I know the people out there love I'm this sh- topic. I'm shocked that you're, you're still hanging on Well, again, I'm not hanging still on to heavy on it. I think there's a case to be made. You really don't believe the it. The best – I've never said anything I don't, don't believe. Uh, the best player in the NBA right now, everybody says LeBron, and there's a great case to be made for LeBron, obviously. I think Kevin Durant has an argument. I firmly no, 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 believe no, no. that. that don't not has an argument. Do is he and I've, the best player? I've been saying this since last June. I've never wavered. Now I will say is, this: Who's the best player in the NBA right Kevin now? Kevin Durant's the best okay. player in the NBA right now. I just want to hear you when say when they your fell chest. down three to two to the Rockets. I had to look myself in the mirror and say, Jason, Durant has not delivered in the fourth quarter. He better come through in these next two games. He was not great in Game Six. That was a Steph Curry, Clay Thompson show. And in Game Seven, he was lights out. I mean, he was very good. And let's just—he uh, averaged thirty a game oh, against the Rockets. He's great. He's phenomenal. Yeah, no now question. let me just push back a little bit on LeBron in the East in these playoffs. Mm-hmm. I know he's put up monster numbers. He avoided the f- next four best players in the East after himself. He's number one. Kyrie Irving, he didn't have to face him. Giannis, he did not have to face him. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, he never had to go against those superstars. We talked about this before. The guys LeBron faced, matched up with, Boyan against the Pacers. <laughs> OG Ananobi, a rookie. Good player, but a rookie. Yeah, he's 20, 21 years old on Toronto. And then Marcus Morris, who's a very good yeah. defender, but he ain't all first team defense. Smart, he's not first. Smaller. He's not a defensive player of the year candidate. Yeah. So when you look at the teams and the players he faced, you're like, I don't want to hear the Raptors won 59 games. They put Pascal Sycam on LeBron at times. 
after OG and Anobi. So LeBron steamrolling folks. I think it's Siakam. Siakam, whatever. I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> to the eight Raptors fans who watch this. I've made Yo, my peace. To no, we the North. North. I'm with y'all. Oh, stop. We the North. You are I not with them. Dismiss You're this. not with the North. Nobody's with the North. <laughs> dismiss Shucks. the disrespect. Look, I got love for y'all. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I, I, no, no, I feel you. Look, I'll ra- okay, that's no. a good point. I mean, there's nobody in their right mind would argue that LeBron James went through anything close to what Kevin Durant had to go through in the Western Conference. Here's the difference, though. It wasn't just Kevin Durant. It was just LeBron James, right? He had, I mean, LeBron James' next leading score, closest, he averaged 34, led all the playoff scores, okay? His second leading score, Kevin Love, 13 points a game. Well, he did have Kyle Korver. You've got to account for Kyle. Kyle Korver didn't even average double figures. I know. I'm kidding. So think about that. LeBron carried his second leading yeah. score was 13 points a game. Who was Kevin Durant's second leading score? Uh, Steph Curry, Curry, 24 Curry. points yeah, yeah. a game. An Clay Thompson great. giving you 20 yeah. a game. Yeah, two all-time greats. That's the thing. First of all, let me just talk basketball-wise. Then I'll get to the series. LeBron James controls a game Unlike yes. anyone we've seen, maybe even including Michael Jordan. I, you know, would agree. Yeah, I guess you can talk Magic Johnson you know, can control you know it like LeBron. LeBron has led every team he played on in assists. I looked this up last night. Yeah. Every single team since he got in the league, he's led in assists. That's not what Probably Durant or Jordan since have ever he done. Ever began playing yes. basketball? That's to just be not in the DNA of Jordan and LeBron. And, and even Durant. if you watch LeBron, like he can control tempo. Kevin Durant got to play like LeBron in terms of that role when Steph was out. And you saw it. They, the Golden State Warriors were not no. the same. He didn't Even against that. Houston, there were times they reverted, which is why I think they were on the ropes. They reverted to playing through Kevin Durant <laughs> instead of doing their free-flowing offense, and you saw they weren't the same. Kevin Durant shot 48% in the playoffs so far. LeBron shot 54%. Now, if you're, LeBron James shot 54%. And who else on that Cavs team did you have to worry about offensively? Uh, well, you really got to respect George Hill, uh, who led the <laughs> – You can't even say it with a straight face. You know, George Hill shot like 25% in the playoffs so far yeah. from three. He That's led the saying. league your entire, in three-point shooting at Sacramento. Your entire defense yeah. is focused on LeBron And they still James. can't stop him. He still drops 34 on 54% shooting. Kevin Durant, you got to worry about Steph. You got to worry about Clay. Maybe Draymond and Durant's only shooting 48% and not scoring as much. Like, it's no, Durant is the second best player in the world. I'm with you on that. It's not even close, though. LeBron is that much better than Durant and everyone else. Okay, so it's not with even Andre close. Iguodala officially out for game one, we know we're going to see a lot of Durant on LeBron. We saw it in the fourth quarter last year of the finals. I'm just going to recap some stats. Fourth quarter last year of the finals, Kevin Durant outscored LeBron. 46-27. Durant shot 62% in the fourth quarter. LeBron, 40, 46%. Durant shot 60% from deep against LeBron in the fourth quarter. LeBron shot 17%. Now, you could say LeBron wore down. Well, he did have Kyrie Irving What at I can say is it was a year ago. I mean, that okay. was one series. If you don't, I mean, one series where Kevin Durant, you could argue. I don't know if I'd say he outplayed LeBron because obviously LeBron averaged, averaged a triple, triple double. double. But, I mean, but Durant in averaged the fourth 35. quarter, yeah. Durant, yeah. yeah. Now you we're going to see. But that's LeBron, one series. How many games has LeBron played? 100 this year or 101? Something yeah. like that. He also played 82 in the regular season and led the league in minutes per game. He is in trouble in the fourth quarter again this finals against Kevin Durant. Here's Well, he probably is, but again, last year, that's a decent argument. I would argue it was one series, and obviously Kevin Durant still Mm -hmm. had a lot more help than LeBron had. But LeBron had Kyrie. He did. So the defense couldn't just zero in on LeBron. We know Kyrie's a They had to worry about Kyrie. This year, I would expect Kevin Durant to outplay LeBron in the fourth just because He's got so much more help. Mm-hmm. So, but that's the thing. Just because you win a championship and lead mean. your team doesn't mean you're the best player oh, in the I world. I agree with that. Right? So LeBron can, I think they'll lose this series. And Durant what, what, may five, have six, better than seven? I'm thinking five. Okay. Uh, but that doesn't mean Durant's okay. better than LeBron. So let's wrap up with another LeBron topic. Um, 
the Philadelphia 76ers, you know, again, we're recording this Wednesday morning. By the time it comes out, they may have fired their GM for all we know, okay? This is Brian Coangelo situation. Um, I mean, what a debacle. If you've read, I'm sure you've read the story by now. Allegedly, uh, that, yeah, allegedly, allegedly yeah. Brian Coangelo was using five burner accounts, took some shots at his teammates, uh, yeah, his players. players on the Sixers, uh, his head coach, uh, Toronto Raptors, you know, former colleagues here. in Toronto. A total debacle. I want to spin this forward because you've been saying for a while you think Philadelphia is the landing spot for LeBron. And yes. we know LeBron is a drama king. There's drama wherever he goes. I don't know if LeBron's going to want to get in this drama in Philadelphia if it's not sorted out. Even if it turns out that it was Colangelo's kid or whoever, is, is there going to be a trust issue in Philadelphia with, with what the president asking, slash GM? I don't asking, know if LeBron is going to want to go there. You're asking, does this put the chances of Philadelphia, does this decrease or hinder the I chances of Philadelphia? I think there's a Philadelphia lot of unanswered LeBron. questions. Oh, there certainly that are. LeBron's but LeBron's going to want answers to before My he... thing is this. I think they'll be ironed out. If it's true that it was Brian Colangelo, you're gone. He's toast. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are out. Now, we don't know if it's him. I hope it's not. But there's but overwhelming evidence that points to him. If and it if is somebody, him, okay, but he should be gone. If now, it's somebody, Chris, that he leaked out. it to and they were using the information from him, I still think he could get in trouble because why are you revealing team secrets? Why are you talking this way about you, the players on the team? I just, I wonder, this is a massively pivotal offseason for the Sixers. They won 51 games. This is a team went to the second round. They were ahead of schedule, right? With them beat and Simmons, they've got a bright future. And now all of a sudden you've got this Adam Bond that just went off well, that's in the, the organization. One, LeBron certainly doesn't want to be a part of a circus. Heck no. He certainly wants a front office that is solid. If Does this change your calculus on where he entertains of going? Do, are the Sixers still the best spot or all of a sudden are a lot of question marks? Sixers are still the best they spot. Just, uh, they just um, pushed up their coach, Brett Brown, new three-year yep, deal. I like okay? Brett Brown. Uh, we, we know LeBron's had some issues with coaches. David Blatt, okay? Uh, my, uh, Brett in Brown, Cleveland I'm fine first with Brett around. Brown. I'm fine with Brett Brown. Okay. I, I think they still are the landing spot because... Over the Lakers. Yes. I mean, Lakers keeps, can afford look, two he might, max I'm not deals. saying he won't go to the Lakers. But I'm saying if, if LeBron James' ultimate motivation, what we're going to find out is what's his motivation. Right. So let, let's just look at each team. If you go to the Lakers, to me, sure, you LeBron James, you go there with a Paul George, you're thinking, we're going to be good. We, we can win. We can challenge the we're Warriors. We're not the fa- We can challenge. We're in the hunt. The Rockets just pushed we're him to in, seven. We're in the hunt. And who was their third best player on the right? Eric Gordon? Eric Gordon's a good player. He's good. Yeah, or Capella. I mean, one you're, of them. you're telling me the Lakers can't put together a team on that level? They're, well, a lot of it depends on how you're going to play them. We, we saw the Warriors. That and you even system, said it. They everybody's looked, ripping Mike D'Antoni. No, but his no, no, no. I'm not ripping Mike good. D'Antoni. They won 65 games. Here, here's what I'm, what I'm saying. If LeBron goes to the Lakers, to me, his number one motivation was lifestyle and and prepare yourself for, for life after career, basketball. Which is understandable. He's 33 it, it, and a half years that's old. That's what he wants to do. Right. So and, and you're thinking, we could win. We got a chance. Well, I don't see why not. We're not defend, but we got a chance. If you stay in Cleveland, obviously it's lifestyle. Your family wants to be there. Mm. You want to be there. And, but, it's and, home and we know next and year that. the Sixers and Celtics are going to oh, be yeah. better Cleveland, if he stays Cleveland in Cleveland. Cleveland would be below. Yeah, they wouldn't that's be expected scary. to get to the finals. <laughs> right. But if you're all to Houston, I'm just thinking is iffy. I, I don't think that fits. I don't compa- know how it we works. gotta and, go dive deep on and Houston. And you would if you took if LeBron went to Houston, you probably have to lose Capella. You're losing Capella. You're losing a lot of your shooters. Eric like, Gordon, not, just, you know, I mean they, they, that they're team a dicey would be spot. depleted. So let's look at Philly. To me, if your ultimate goal is LeBron James, and this is in my opinion what it should be, chasing the goat title. And I know the one thing I need to do, I'm going to have Michael beat in terms of individual statistics. The one thing I've got to do is keep going to the finals and win some. Okay, but you just said earlier in the podcast, even if they beat the Warriors, you're not willing to put him as GOAT. So yeah, if he but lo- I'm moving so goes, in closer. So if he goes if to if the he, Sixers? If he, keep, if, he, if he can get to five and you've been, let's say he ends up being five and six in the finals. Now you say you won five. You got there twice as much know, as man. Michael. Okay. Oh, I, don't, I think it's speculative. a no-brainer. Let me ask on the fly. Uh, highly speculative. LeBron, Embiid, 
Simmons. We don't know what else is going to be around them. They'll probably have to lose I, some guys. I think you could. You could I, I mean, I lose don't Covington, know this for a fact, maybe. But Reddick, you would want to see if Reddick will come right. back for less money. Or or is that Boston you could keep team Covington, with you got Kyrie, Saric, Hayward, oh, Philly's Tatum? Better. Philly's no. Better. I'm sorry. Philly's better. First of all, Boston just smoked them without Kyrie and Hayward. They needed a closer. What's LeBron James? LeBron is a closer. Okay. They needed veteran leadership. What, Kyrie's LeBron not a closer? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm no, telling like I would still, I will ride Boston better than Philly, even if they get LeBron. Philly. Nah, no way. No way. But that's, you, you see, you don't like Gordon Hayward. I don't know what you personally nah, have against him. I don't dislike Gordon Hayward, but he's not a superstar. He's he, damn close. Gordon Hayward is an awesome player. How many awesome times he made the All-Star team? I don't know. Once. Hey, twice. So, oh, he's like Once 26 years old. He, he's been he's, in the league like eight, yeah. years, seven years. At some point, we're going to have to do a top 20 he's list. He's a pretty good player. But top I 20 think, player in the NBA, I right? I think Jason Tatum's going to be better. Yeah, maybe three or four him. years from now. No, maybe maybe next year. Oh, stop. Definitely oh the God. year after Gordon that. Gordon was so good. Jason Tatum is going to be better. I love Jason Tatum. I mean, Jalen Brown is going to be better than him as well. Uh, well, I don't know about that yet. We'll see. You Jim didn't Brown's even 21. watch Gordon Hayward when he was in Utah. I was a huge <laughs> fan. I, we got a guy on the staff here who's a big j- jazz fan. Look, uh, look. Hey, here, here, let me just get to back to your ultimate question. This is why I don't think it hinders the chances of LeBron going there. If Colangelo's guilty, you're fired. You're done. If he is exonerated and innocent, then you keep him. And it's not an issue. Yeah. He was he was catfished yeah, but that, or whatever. That's going to be cl- a clout catfish. I like or whatever that. the term would be. Is that the, is that be. the usage what, catfish? What, what, no, well I think done. So, but whatever it would be. Y'all, y'all know out there, right. social media Okay, types. so this is a great podcast. I do want to cl- close on a winning note. We are slated to play one on one at some point. You rarely point. Clo- close on a winning well, At some point You've this summer. It could be next week, people. We will. Maybe. We, we may live maybe stream it on I got to see if I can play. I haven't played in a year. So we'll see. So just so you know, the basketball resume this guy played Division Three. Your boy didn't play anywhere. He just plays a lot now, pickup style. So Broussard thinks he's going to skunk me 7 0, 11 0. I know that's not going to happen. Seven. Uh, there's zero chance seven, of you beating me 7 0. Really? It's make it, take it, right? Uh, we can do that. Yeah, there's no way you're beating me 7-0. I guarantee that. Unless his look defense at, is, at, unless this guy's all, Andre the, Iguodala and I can't player. get a shot off. What, look at the chess player talking smack. Uh, no chess? way? Now you ain't motivating me to shut you, you out. Shut me out if, oh, it's man, if I It's not about me shut out, beating that, you, it's about me shutting if, you out. If I get shut out, I will admit that you've beaten me in a couple debates on this podcast. Right now, I'm undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> on that note, we will end this segment of not Knockdown, Jay. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, give us a five stars on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Leave us a, co- a comment and, of course, download it for future episodes. Peace, people. <laughs>